to welcome everybody uh, to the first Travel Tech in 20 of 2020. Um, Travel Tech in 20, as most of you already know, is a 20-minute technology briefing, and the whole point of it is to keep everyone in the travel industry up to date on all the new products and services and anything that could really disrupt the industry. But most importantly, these products and services can improve your travel program. Before we start, uh, let me take just a minute. I'd like to remind everyone that your inf information is completely confidential. We don't share it with anyone. It will not be shared with the presenter. Uh, and most importantly, if you have questions throughout this webinar, on that right-hand side, you'll see a little area where you can ask your questions. We encourage the questions. We actually have a questions and answer uh, segment at the very end, and we will get those going. At the end of this all, <clears throat> if you would like to set up a meeting with them, or a demonstration, you will be provided their contact information. Uh, and as always, you can contact us and we'll, we'll kind of be the intermediary and get that going. Um, finally, this presentation is going to be recorded. Everyone will receive an email of the recording and it will also be posted on our website. Now, without further ado, let me take a second to introduce Robert Davey. So Robert is the senior executive uh, who has led large organizations, both regional and national. Um, he's been accountable for large T&E budgets and how to optimize those through a variety of economic environments. So with that, he also brought Denise, and I am excited about Denise. Denise is the Director of Global Travel at Domo, so she is in a lot of your positions, uh, and she uses Domo to help her travel program, so we get a little first-hand knowledge here. Thank you both for being here today. Uh, looking forward to your presentation. And Robert, why don't you take it away for us? Great. Thanks so much for the opportunity. We really appreciate that. Um, so my name's Robert Davey, and I lead uh, business development uh, partner and partnerships at Domo. Uh, for those of you that may not have heard of Domo, um, this was a uh, kind of an idea that, that grew out of our founder and, and CEO when he was running his first company. And he had this challenge as, as a CEO of a publicly traded company of really getting real-time information about what was going on in the business. If he wanted to know something that was going on in marketing, he had to go to the CMO and they would run reports and provide stuff in PowerPoints. Or if he wanted uh, financial information from the CFO. And so when, when he sold his first company, Omnisure, to Adobe, he said, this is a problem that I really want to go solve. Why is it as an executive I'm not able to get real-time information when I need it to be able to make decisions. And so he founded Domo. Uh, it's been about a 10-year journey. We've done a number of acquisitions. We're a publicly traded company headquartered uh, in American Fork, Utah. Excuse me, Utah. And one of the things that, you know, as, as we've grown up as, as a company, one of the things we've seen in the marketplace is, this whole idea around digital transformation, it's a strategic imperative that is hitting every single organization. It doesn't matter the size, the shape. It doesn't matter the industry you play in. It doesn't matter the you know, type of role that you have across the business. There is this desire to be better connected as an employee with your customers and with the data. The challenge is about 16% of these projects that people embark on to transform their organizations actually work. And what happens is they actually get started and say, okay, we're, we're going to move to the cloud. And there are great benefits from it from a cost standpoint, from an elasticity standpoint, um, from a security. And so you know, they start looking at, okay, let's move certain departmental organizations or applications that we run to the cloud. And so uh, if you're in IT, it might be ServiceNow. If you're in marketing, it might be Adobe. HR, it might be Workday or sales. It could be CRM. And while there are certain benefits that, that happen from this, um, the challenge becomes the data gets isolated within that application that it's sitting in within that cloud. And so that's really where Domo shines, um, is that we have the ability to get to the data anywhere it exists and actually be able to help you um, be able to make sense of it. And so at Domo, we really do three things well. Uh, we connect and transform data. You're like, okay, help me to understand how that's interesting. I will. Um, we actually visualize and analyze that. And I think that's where most people think about BI or business intelligence. They're like, oh, it's graphs and charts, and maybe I get to see, you know, some of the data that I use to run my business shown in a way that uh, looks different than it does in the application. And the, so 
that's one thing we'll talk a little bit more about that. The other part that we do is the way in which we've constructed Domo is that it enables you to build these low code or no code applications. And what that really means is we're trying to democratize data. So all of the data that exists in a company, people should be able to leverage, certainly with the right amount of governance with it based upon their role and seniority, but be able to get them the data they need so that they can drive better business insights and more effective ways in which they run the business. So in terms of the first thing we do, we connect and transform. And so if you think about all of the different applications that, that you folks would work with, whether it be the different uh, vendors, Avis and Hertz, or you know, um, the hotel carriers, right? there's all different types of data that exist. And so what we've been able to do is we've built over a thousand connectors. We have more connectors than anybody else in the marketplace. Why that becomes important is we can help you bring data from anywhere, from your you know, PC sitting in an Excel spreadsheet, to one of those cloud-based applications or even one of the applications that one of your vendors could be running. And so we enable that to come into Domo. You don't have to replace the application, but we bring it in in a way that we can actually reason over the data. If you think about it, the way Hertz and Avis is gonna represent data, it's probably different. They are gonna have different classifications. And so we can normalize that so that you can get actually a better and holistic view as you think about you know, the car rentals across all of the folks within your organizations. And so connect and transform. And this is probably when you think about digital transformation, this is the hardest part is how do you get all of the data in and make it ready to be able to do something with? And so then this goes to the second thing that Domo does, which is we visualize and analyze. And not much has really changed in terms of graphs or charts in the last, oh, 20, 25 years since the term BI got coined. But what we do that's a little bit different is we allow, um, a lot of groups have data scientists within their organizations and they build algorithms to make themselves a little bit smarter. So we don't just visualize the data in graphs and charts. We let you reason over it and drive intelligence in it um, in, in a deeper way than just kind of that visualization. The last part um, is that we have the ability to kind of make these applications that are low code, no code. And what I talked about before is it's really democratizing all of the data. What we find as we work with companies is there's so much data that's out there, but people can't actually get to it. It's dark data that exists, and they're not able to actually access it in a way that, that they need. And so one of the things that's really cool with Domo is you can get on your phone your Domo cards and your business intelligence, and it's done in sub-second response time. So imagine you're actually in a meeting and somebody asks a question. You're not going to have to go to... Um, you know, go to your PC, if, if, within your phone, you'll be able to get that served up to you real time. And so we're really excited about this. And while I think Domo is awesome, I think you're probably more interested to hear from Denise in terms of, hey, Denise, Domo sounds pretty interesting, but how are people, how are you actually leveraging this to run the business? Because I think that's where Domo really shines. So Denise, maybe I could hand it off to you right now and you could show some folks, maybe some examples of how you're running our travel business on Domo. All right, Denise, I've just made you the presenter, and it looks like you self-muted yourself. There we go. Perfect. Oh, no, I'm, yeah, Hi, I'm Denise. here. <laughs> I'm here. So, um, hi, all. I'm Denise Daniel. I'm the global travel manager at Domo. And um, as Robert said, <clears throat> when I took this role, I, I had a lot of data coming at me, TMC data, expense data, benchmarking data, but I needed a way to be able to consume it and make sense of it so that my team could make decisions in real time and from anywhere we are working all over the world. So to that end, and, and then I should also add right here too, that we also needed to be able to integrate the data from our finance department, procurement, HR. And so to that end, we built this great uh, dashboard. And this is an example of, of one of the dashboards that we've built. This is a travel manager dashboard and as you can see we've got exception monitoring in here cost analysis uh, vendor cost tracking and then actually one of my favorite and often overlooked areas we've got traveler satisfaction to make sure we're really taking care of our our road warriors but you know in addition to this this great dashboard which may or may not have data that's useful to you one of my primary concerns when I came to Domo, and I think an overarching concern for many people in, in travel industry, 
is leakage. And so um, let me just switch over here and show you. So this is, um, this is a travel leakage analyzer that we actually built for one of our customers and I'm using it today by permission. And one of the great things about this card is just at a glance, you know, if I'm, if I'm in a meeting and I've got Domo on my phone, I, I can look at my travel leakage and answer some cursory questions right off the bat. I can see my compliance, what my actual amount is over you know, any period of time. But then in addition to that, where I think Domo really shines is the view filter detail option. So within this travel leakage analyzer, we built these travel leakage metrics cards because I think as most of us can appreciate, leakage becomes a problem as it snowballs. And so for example, let's just take a look at this leakage by employee card. I love this because this is where I can really drill down and see what's really going on. So for example, let's take a look at this Wanda Thomas. Wanda Thomas has all this you know, leakage, air leakage booked out of policy. So she's just doing that because she's loyal to one airline and she's using their card. Let's take a look, let's drill down. Let's, let's take a look at what she's really doing. Oh no, okay, I see. She's just booking everything outside the booking tool. So I can have a conversation. This is just a way that for me, Domo has been a game changer. Let me head back to that dashboard and show you a couple of other things. I, I feel like another difficult piece of my job, and maybe some of you can relate to this, is just that, that um, difficulty between saving the company money and making or keeping employees happy. And sometimes those are, are not, uh, those are mutually exclusive. Sometimes that's a difficult problem. And, and one area, especially where I, I feel like that can be challenging is, is hotel spend. Employees can be super brand loyal and sensitive to staying outside of their comfort zone. And so within Domo, to help me with that, we built some cards to help us manage hotel. I like this card because it's showing me, okay, uh, our average cost by per night by hotel chain, where are we getting the most bang for our buck and, and where, where are we losing out? Um, this other hotel card is also really helpful. The average cost per night uh, by hotel booking method. Again, you know, are we, are we really leveraging our TMC to, to help us get the best bang for our buck? And again, these cards really are helpful also during the RFP process. And lastly, let me just head back here to, the, um, to this dashboard again. I love this hotel attach rate to bookings card. So this card I feel like is a really good example of how Domo can, can serve some dual purposes. This card shows right off the bat, okay, we're not even getting close to our 50% goal of, of hotel attach rate. So, so right there, there's a savings opportunity and, and I, I can see you know what areas, what um, dates were difficult and where I need to hone in on this. But then in addition to that, um, there's this duty of care piece here. So I, th I think with some of the challenges uh, that we're seeing with the widespread concerns over coronavirus and how that's going to affect business travel, duty of care is, is really coming to the forefront. And one of the great things about Domo is that we've been able to build a variety of cards, including a, a heat map that shows me where I have employees traveling in any given moment. And I love this extra layer of security that I can get within Domo. So it's not just giving me that duty of care piece, but saving us money at the same time. So with that, let me turn the time back to Robert and the team at Executive Travel for some Q&A. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time there. Uh, real quick, before we get into the question and answer segment, um, thank you both for being here, and, and I look forward to this. But if you have any questions, uh, on the right-hand side there, you'll see the question box. Feel free to send them in, and we will ask them. Uh, I actually have one already from Jason for you, um, and it asks if it if it connects to Coupa, Calpa, uh, C O U P A. I'm not sure yeah. quite what that is, but uh, yeah, Coupa. They ask yeah, if we, you connect with that service. Absolutely, we built a connector to Coupa. That was actually one of our earliest connectors. We actually use Coupa ourselves. Oh, perfect. All right, another question I do have coming in here. 
uh, is how this tool can help them leverage in RFPs and how it realistically can save them money. Yeah, so I, um, I use the hotel cards all the time when I go to RFP because um, all the data is, is right there. So I can go to, for example, a provider hotel and say, no, look, really, I had this many hotel nights and often it'll be slightly different than their data. And I've had 100% success with them adopting my data because my data is almost always more fresh than theirs. So that's just a, a real-time example of, of me with RFP. I'll tell you, in terms right, so of saving you... money, can Go I ahead, give an example of saving money? Yeah, sure. So, and this is one of the things that I've worked on with Denise is, um, you know, when I first joined um, Domo, um, I don't want to say I had some of my, my employees that were bad actors. I would say it was more that they weren't adhere, adhering to corporate policy of booking travel two weeks in advance. And so one of the things that Denise did is um, she worked with our group so that ev every employee within my organization, we were able to get data on um, what their travel spend was. And we saw one person in particular whose travel was his, his cost for um, average airfare was over $1,000. Um, his hotel rate was 3x of what everybody else's was. And so it gave me a coaching opportunity to go back to my employee and kind of ask like, hey, you seem to be way far off from the standards of everybody else. Help me to understand kind of how you're booking travel. And he's like, well, I do it the night before. And I'm like, how are you managing your business if you're doing it the night before? Like, when are you actually coordinating the plans with your partners that you're going out to visit? He's like, oh, probably, you know, a couple of weeks in advance. And so it gave me an opportunity to really talk with them about being a be better steward of corporate funds, what the travel policies were. And I could literally drill down through Domo into the specific trips and show him, you know, where, um, what trips were, were the impact of the cost of booking, you know, the night before, how his travel was very different than everybody else. And, and without that kind of real-time data in that conversation with the individual, it would have been much harder than just, hey, let's adhere to the corporate policy. All right. Hey, Denise, I'm going to put you on the spot just slightly. So today, uh, as everybody knows, um, Italy had all the alerts go out about the coronavirus in the northern portion of Italy. There have been waivers sent out across all the different airlines. Basically, they're warning travelers, stay away. Right. I only know this because we spoke about it a little bit yesterday. Can you show us a little bit how in real time you can find out um, using you know, Domo as essentially a duty of care tool. Could you show us how you can find out real time if you have a traveler sitting in that area and, you know, how essentially that can cover you in that way? So I can't show it to you right now because um, I can't show you my actual dashboard due to HIPAA regulations. It has people's real um, information on it. But I... I, uh, I apologize. Built... I thought maybe you had like a, an example on here of just showing where general travelers are as the example. Yeah, I don't have, that's a great, that's a great question. And I don't have that particular heat map card in my example deck for, to show you today. But about two years ago, um, I, I don't know if some of you will recall, but there was a really severe set of nor'easters on the East Coast. And I mean, they were back to back and it stranded a lot of our travelers. Um, after the first one. And so I worked with the, the TMC, obviously, to get everyone out. But after that, I went to my team and I said, well, that was just silly. I live on the East Coast. I knew that the the uh, storms were coming. I could have gotten people out way more effectively if I known if I had known exactly where all of them were. And they said, yeah, sure enough, let's build a heat map. So within about three days, we um, had not only built the heat map, we'd implemented it. And using the data from our TMC that that showed the bookings, I, I am now able on that heat map to see where everyone is. So, so to your question about Italy, um, when those when those waivers actually before the waivers even came out, when those news stories about a week ago now started coming out about growing concerns in Italy, I went right to that heat map and I said, okay, who from EMEA do we have in Italy? And, or even booked in Italy because I can 
filter the data to sh just show me booked, not yet traveled. And I was able to curtail a planned trip to Bologna and you know, keep that employee from traveling into an area that we now know is affected. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry about putting you on the spot a little bit no, on there. Uh, I do remember us having the conversation about the duty of care, but I did forget about the fact that the heat map wasn't on there. So that is, that is my fault. Not uh, but we have run out of time for the travel tech and 20 today. Uh, this will conclude it. First of all, thank you very, very much to Robert and Denise. This was extremely informative. If anybody wants information, if you want to find out how this data can save you tons of money here, uh, we actually have a client who's currently using it. Um, and I think we're at 14% uh, that we saved last year, somewhere in that general area uh, with working with Domo. So it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, make sure to contact us. Otherwise, we will be sending you Robert's contact information uh, in the follow-up email tomorrow. A few quick webinar, or excuse me, a few quick reminders before I end the webinar. Uh, like I said, tomorrow you will be receiving an email with a PowerPoint presentation and a copy of the video. If you have any questions or concerns, reach out. Um, and then, lastly, this is only the first Travel Tech in 20 of the year. I'm currently working on scheduling them out for the remainder of the year, and should have a schedule to you all shortly of at least next month, if not the following three months. So, be on the lookout for that. Thank you all again and have a fantastic day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.